Welcome everyone to another of our in-depth low-level videos. Today I wanted to take a closer look at the Intel x86 instruction set architecture, certainly one of the prime examples of complex instruction set architecture in contrast to this risk reduced instruction set architecture that we looked at previously. So previously, some videos there be, uh, before, we looked at RISC-V, the latest and greatest and open instruction set architecture. And instruction set architecture means actually the, the low-level machine code that uh, the, the CPUs process uh, to get their work done. This is, as we've seen previously also, some special numbers that are specific to each and every uh, processor. Uh, for example, this is a format for RISC-V, so like especially encoded like addition, subtraction and so on um, have different numbers on all the MIPS, RISC and so on and the whole format is different as you, we have seen in previous videos and today we'll take a closer look at x86. So how is it different um, or how did it start? So actually if you were wondering what, it, for some it might actually be a surprise, many just um, always say and here x86 where is this x actually coming from because the history actually goes really far back. Let me take a closer look here at what Wikipedia has to share and so actually initially this was not x86 initially this was Intel 8086 and uh, even that was not the first of this kind of either. Actually this goes even further back. I hope it's your predecessor. 8085, which fun fact, I uh, even had one 8085. Uh, my father, an electrician with some master course here in Germany in the 80s, they built actually there at their course um, some um, 8085 based microprocessor system, a very simple one. I think we still have it in the attic. I probably maybe take it next time just if, if it's still there um, to show you on YouTube. But so 8085, so even older and even that is not the first one. So we are going back as far as the 70s as how old is this even, right? And before that was a Intel 8080. And so they are not entirely compatible, but the initially 8086 is somewhat based on that. So initially this Intel 8080, do they even list a, even there they have as, and yeah, this goes back to the Intel 8, uh, 8008 or 88. Um, and yeah, so they are, do not share that many similar similarities. However, um, to the Intel 8085, it is still somewhat similar, 8-bit microprocessor um, with some accumulator and, and not much else. Where is it here of, um, yeah, main registers, A, B, uh, C, D, E, H, L, stack pointer, program pointer, point, uh, pointer. These are the internal registers as per the previous video. Um, maybe I make a more dedicated video how this exactly works if are people interested in that. But Intel 8086 is that, so the um, also initially maybe sometimes known as IAPX86. Raise your hand if you ever heard that. 16 bit microprocessor from the end of the 70s or uh, 1976. So that, that is how old the base is of the stuff that you probably run at home each and every day. And um, all of your latest and greatest Intel CPUs are theoretically compatible to that. So they could more or less usually run all the CPM DOS stuff that you could run on an uh, 8086 IBM XT or something. Um, there, which certainly somewhat is um, maybe a little bit hilarious. So 16-bit microprocessor and 16-bit. Um, and as I said, this shares somewhat a little bit with the 8085. I still have some A, B, C, D registers. Of course, a little bit more like split. So this is, and there you see already the complexity on all the other RISC, more modern RISC architectures. You have like 16 general purpose registers from 0 to 15. And here, yeah, you have way less and they are all a little bit special. You cannot just use them freely. So like A, um, A, B, C, D um, index registers. So they are not general purpose. You can only use them more or less for very specific purposes and some segment registers status registers and the main registers are even split in 
8-bit half slow and high word, also something usually not as directly seen in RISC processors. So what, what do we see here so far? Very few registers um, and initially 16-bit and the x86 name comes from the fact that there is such a long history of compatible processors. So Intel every few years they um, innovated there a little bit. Uh, 186 uh, not as popular and not as much produced. Uh, 286 uh, then in the 80s uh, like 1882 uh, 1982 um, whopping 135,000 registers in case you were wondering. The 286 still 16-bit and the first 32-bit as many of you probably already know the 386 released in 19, 18, 1985. And this is basically going back to what we still run today on each and every one, everyone's PC. 32-bit, um, so they, what has Intel done? They increased the registers to um, extended <laughs> extended registers because it is uh, yeah, every couple of years extending this stuff. So um, the, the previously 16-bit with 8-bit halves, A, low and high, um, and then the extended 32-bit. So still the 8-bit, 16-bit portions, um, then the extended 32-bit portions, and everything else also made 32-bit. Um, and um, you can probably already guess that with all the five years of extending this stuff became also always backward compatible. So all the old craft is always there. It's still visible today um, on all your latest and greatest Intel and AMD Ryzen stuff. And um, the 386, the, the tricky part is um, that the initial 16-bit processors had 16-bit to address more than 16-bit, like a, more than a Commodore, uh, Commodore uh, C64 or something. They used segment registers. So uh, initially, we, I do not take a closer look at that because it would go too far. But initially, to address like one megabyte and a little bit, which led to the infamous A20 gate. But one megabyte and a little bit with 16-bit with segment register uh, segment registers so that you address memory in... Um, 64k segments and um, totally annoying to program um, because you could at a time only address 64k of memory with one segment address uh, segment re register and if you had more memory after the initial IBM PC uh, where probably 64k was enough for everyone um, to address more you had to fiddle around with segments and overlays and, and constantly swap this back and forth and not the uh, biggest fun. Um, this changed with the 286, which many people do not know, and you pr might be surprised to hear that the 286, um, while still 16-bit, um, had a protected mode. So many people think the protected mode for protected memory and um, for gigabyte of 32-bit addressing was invented with the 386. But actually, the 286 already had a protected mode. Many people didn't know that. It is, however, completely incompatible. And um, because you could not easily leave this protected mode, um, it, it required a complete reset. And there was some special fiddling to do this faster. Um, so not that much software used it. Um, and uh, yeah, whatever. Not worth to look at it. But the real protected mode came with uh, the modern protected mode came with the 386, meaning uh, memory protection that you couldn't just clobber all the memory. You, if a user application, like if you enable that, like Windows NT or, or Linux, certainly, or BSD or whatever, then you could protect the memory and in this protected mode, as the name says. And um, on a page granularity of 4K pages, for example, mark pages as available, as protected, read, write, execute. And uh, that's certainly very helpful for modern um, multi-user, modern <coughs> Unix systems. Um, so, and this is again what we still use basically more or less today until AMD innovated AMD 64 for 64-bit programming. So let's take a closer look. Why is this stuff so um, complex? We've seen already with all the legacy. So the initial 16-bit stuff is called real mode, um, the, the new stuff 286, 36 is called protected mode, 
um, and 32-bit registers. All the legacy already sounds relatively complex and complicated, but this is not the reason why this is complex instruction set architecture. Complex instruction set architecture stems from the fact that unlike this more modern RISC reduced instruction set architecture, we have seen here this RISC-V is very regular. Um, that these instructions here are all 32-bit, um, have the same format more or less. We have details previous video if you're interested in modern amazing stuff. Um, also, yeah, many registers, right? 32 um, general purpose registers because you can never have in enough general purpose registers. And here's the base instruction format as we've seen in the previous video. So here would be like R, these this are the types for whether it's, it's a logic operation, a load, a jump, uh, all the internal stuff the CPU is doing, like adding stuff, uh, multiplying, dividing, jumping, comparing, and what makes the CPU tick and do its thing. And this is very regular and simple, like you could say reduced, right? And when we look at the Intel, um, Intel 64 32 architecture software developer manual, volume two here with two, nearly 2200 freaking pages, freaking complex, right? You take a look here, there's a lot of um, stuff here already, figures, tables, and um, so on. So when we take a look here, many processors, so uh, yeah, endiness, number, exceptions, yes, fine, whatever. So uh, here it starts, instruction format for protected mode, remote, address mode, and virtual 80, 86 mode. And this actually is one of the reasons uh, one of the two major reasons why this stuff is complex. And this is x86 family of processors and instructions. They are not S reg or are, are entirely not regular. So when we take a look, so this is the encoding for all the instructions um, subset of the format shown here below. And as you see, so this is not like 32 bit and that's it, like basically RISC. 5, MIPS, PowerPC, Spark, and all the other RISC architectures are doing it. But this is variable length opcodes and um, formed here out of opcodes, additional um, mod RM register memory, um, displacements, immediates, and additional prefixes. And I think from memory, uh, if, if I recall correctly, um, the the minimum size is one, so the instruction, the, the, the most simple instruction can be one byte, which saves mem memory. However, as complex as this stuff is, the, lo the longest is, if I recall correctly, 15 freaking bytes. I think it is still, in, even in modern Intel and AMD 64-bit processors, uh, still an implementation, a limitation of, yeah, the maximum length of, uh, of this stuff should be 15 bytes, if I recall correctly. But I think I've recently seen it in an SSE, um, document, correct me if I'm wrong. This means that the decoding of the instruction is already super complex. So writing a compiler and assembler is already somewhat complex with all the prefixes, opcodes, modifiers, and so on. And disassembling and certainly and de decoding in the CPU is super complex, right? Um, it's the opposite of reduced and simple. So for each for each instruction, each clock cycle, your processor can execute something, um, starts decoding this. The, the decoder is super large, uh, thing out of, of, of hundreds of thousands of logic elements and microcode probably, um, needs to parse the stuff. So it needs to look one byte. What is it? Is it some prefix, another prefix, another opcode? So the, the decoding is already super complex. It can be anything from one to 15 bytes and then um, adding all this stuff together. Um, like we take a look, so what, so what is this stuff doing? So opcode certainly, opcode is like, here you also see already one, two th or three bytes. So prefix, the prefixes are one byte. The opcode can be one, two or three bytes. Then some modifier, uh, register memory, one byte. There you see if required, um, SIB if required, they already see, right? If required, right? So you, you can have some opcode like addition and then additional stuff if required. So super complex, right? Um, and it certainly uh, doesn't, doesn't make the internal, um, internal architecture of the CPU particularly beautiful and, and reduced and simple. And so how this works is that um, an opcode, for example, addition um, is 16 
16-bit, for, uh, 16-bit, for example, because legacy going back to the 70s, right? And um, if you run in, um, or, or actually the default, that, that already starts. If you're running in protected mode, the default pr- usually is then 32-bit because 32-bit protected mode. And this is prefixes, you can change this. So there are prefixes to override this, the default size. So if you run in protected mode, like 386 and later with Linux, then the default opcode size of, of an addition probably is 32-bit, unless you override this. So if you want a 16-bit, then you have a, a 66-hex um, size override, or seg- there are segmented size overrides, uh, 66 and I think 67-hex, for example. And so with this, um, with this prefixes, you can modify the sizes, overrides this. Um, there are also segment overrides, so usually the, the opcodes use a uh, data segment, for example, but there are also prefixes to override which other segment register you use. So if you use the FSGS, there are prefixes for that. And also, with, as we will see, this gets super complex and out of hand. Um, there are many, many, many more of these prefixes. So as we see here, this uh, even this mod, mod RM byte is made up out of uh, mod reg opcode RM and this SIB is scale index base is this one byte is made out of a two bit scale, a couple of uh, three bits base and three bits index. So yeah, even all those fields um, decoded down to a couple of bits here and there. And um, of course, for 64 bit pro uh, computing, AMD as a 64 bit extension is AMD extension, right? AMD invented 64 bit x86 as Intel at its infamous Intanium IA64, which no one, no one wanted, energy hungry and not as fast stuff anyway, super expensive uh, workstation class stuff. And for 64-bit computing, AMD of course also added its own um, Rex prefix here, which um, is um, yeah AMD invention. So if we take a look, so previously MIPS and um, this are MIPS, as you see, super regular, here's an addition, um, super regular, all this, all those instructions more or less the same here, 32-bit, RISC-V the same. And when we take a look here, addition here, for example, um, here, this is all this stuff, previous video for RISC-V, right? Uh, let's just go to some addition and um, uh, somewhere it, it will be. No, whatever, somewhere comes. Okay, maybe we just search for it. Uh, single precision, something. So this works internally for, if you take a look here for something, this is double precision floating point, but whatever. So basically some bits in this instruction are the opcode, addition, subtraction, multiply, divide, compare, jump, and so on. And in x86, it is similar, just much more complex. Uh, Here are, by the way, some um, overrides, instruction prefixes. So let's finish a summary of the prefixes before we go to the opcodes. So group one, so lock lock and repeat. Uh, Lock is for um, um, multi-process, multi-processor memory bus locking to make sure no other um, processor, um, that the stuff is atomic and no other processor modifies uh, this to make sure that operations are atomic. Then there's also something that is really very CISC, a repeat. So uh, what this repeat prefix means is that in x86 you can re- automatically repeat an instruction, what something completely unheard of in RISC land. In RISC land you have, um, in RISC processors you have if you, for example, is a string copy, you have a loop of um, setting some counter um, and and then cop- lo- loading, storing some data on, on risk, like with, with that, load, store, increment, um, and, and jump. And what you can do on x86 is, this is string instruction, you can have the processor automatically repeat an instruction um, for this, like repeat, something like repeat, store or load or set and so on. And um, this works only, there you see how special all this stuff is, special and complex. This works only, the, the counter can only be C, uh, the, the C register 
for counting this. So repeat something um, until not zero prefix applied only to string input and output instructions. And yeah, so you can't apply to, to everything, um, only to string and, and input output and, and only use a, a C register for uh, the count. And um, yeah, repeat, um, so either repeat um, not equal, uh, not equal, not zero or repeat equal, uh, repeat zero um, prefixes. Um, and this also, this is basically with like two, inst like um, repeat prefix and instruction. So with, with like one instruction, the processor might execute many hundreds or thousand instructions copying some string data. Um, and of course this stuff is in the processor usually encoded in microcode. So this is uh, usually even the, the early 80, 86 processors usually had microcode for a lot of instructions. So this was not implemented like with native instructions in the uh, silicon um, logic unit ALU, but with micro additional microcode running for this complex stuff. And until recently, this was not even the highest performance. So actually um, only latest processors uh, the last years for string copy. I think I probably mentioned this in another video previously, which is also what you want to share, like and subscribe and learn all the in-depth details. Um, so this was even for if for a string copy and mem, mem set or well, this uh, C standard C functions of working with memory, this repeat and string stuff was not even the fastest. Um, in, pen, in 486 uh, Pentium, uh, Athlon and, and stuff. And only the very latest processor has have this optimized. So they're actually um, not even sure if there is a CPU ID bit. Maybe there is, but um, maybe, maybe there was even a CPU ID bit of, a bit of repeat stuff is fast. Um, and then it's like, but even then it, this repeat stuff is often not as fast as using single instruction multiple data for processing. 64 bit at a time, so um, yeah, crazy complex. Um, whatever, what else do we have here? Then group two, segment overrides. As I said um, already a minute ago, segment overrides, so usually this stuff is using a data segment. Like if you load and store data, this is usually the data segment, but as we've seen, there are other segment registers. So if an instruction loads and stores memory, operates on other segment registers, then the instruction just becomes longer with an additional segment override here, code segment, stack segment, data segment, um, extra segment, F, G segments, branch, branch hits of uh, crazy complex stuff, right? Encoding that, uh, this is only a hint of telling the processor of its internal branch prediction logic of if the compiler or the programmer knows, hey, this branch is probably not taken, like additional prefixes of, hey, that's not likely or that's likely, that's crazy. Anyway, operand, so that, as I said, operand size um, prefix uh, 60, my memory served me well, 66 and 67 hex of uh, operand size override um, mandatory prefix for some instructions and address size. So with this, whether you're running, if you, with a 386 or later run in real mode, you can override 16-bit operations to be 32-bit or vice versa. If you're running in protected mode, this is, you override the default size from 32-bit to 16-bit. And again, wasn't it super nice when this stuff was in risk, risk stuff super nicely, um, the same format, which, yeah, that is the opposite of, yeah, su super com complex as as crazy as you could go. Then the opcodes, um, yeah, this this mod RM SIB um, bytes here um, encode here uh, the additional address forms as we've seen index, um, this was already mentioned, um, scale index. So this is for pointers if you address, so what this is doing is scaling index and base. So if you address into some structure with some pointer, you have, you have a register to some struct, like um, struct as in C, C++ and stuff programming, um, like a class, like an object. And then you have offsets in there, like a couple of bytes here and there. Uh, this can be used for this addressing and also multiplication for arrays, like scaling this, like scale by two and four, as far as I remember correctly. And yeah, let's take a look at this actual bytes. 
this is actual encodings. So here are the encodings for the register, so 16-bit addressing form of mod RM byte. So this encodes the um, register to be used um, and the addresses. So there you see it's it's not as regular in risk reduced instruction set. You had here like addressing load and store. Let's go to some load. Uh, there would be double load and store. So uh, there would be quite precision. Yeah, so here, here we have some regular offset and base uh, for all the instructions that are load and store. Um, although this is a floating point, but doesn't really matter too much. And in x86, so in in RISC, you can use always any of the registers, right? This is a huge difference. So here we have the registers, base and source. Um, here are five bits for any register there. Um, and he, on x86, we can't use any registers. So if you load and store something, then you have only a couple of encodings here and not any. So you need to look this up in this table or like the processor has this hard coded and the assembler of your compiler and assembler has all of this like known hard coded in some kind of table what kind of stuff can be encoded. So for example, um, effective address here, this is encoding mod and RM register memory. So if this is 0000, zero, zero, zero then this is BX, uh, BX plus SI, um, like base, like basically base, uh, base pointer plus SE source index or destination index. And so they also see the special, the special um, function of this registers as seen here. Um, is this somewhat on the here on this nice list? The main registers for um, computations, logic operations, the index registers, um, and the, the segment selectors, uh, code data, and so on. And source. This is usually used for. Of co course, you could use it for anything, but usually the as a name already implies this is usually intended to be used as source, destination, base pointer, and stack pointer. And this is what. Only some of these encodings you can choose, like BX or um, like general register B um, or source index, destination index, displacement, um, probably was it immediate maybe or something. And then, um, yeah, which, which registers are used. And so the default um, nodes here, there you see also how, how complex is this stuff. It Not only do you need a complex table, also some nodes, default segment register is stack, SS stack. Uh, segment, effective address, uh, something, and so on. And 32-bit uh, addressing forms um, is certain, certainly similar. Um, I'm not really sure if... Um, yeah, you see here this, this was BX whatever, and then here it's um, AX, so they apparently changed this. Maybe, we, let's see, zero, zero, something. Did also, yeah, stuff that even if, like me, with pro, um, doing low-level code, you don't even often study this stuff. Um, you, you only study this, this bits and numbers when you actually write a compiler and assembler. So they apparently changed this here, if I interpret this correctly, um, from uh, zero, zero, something zero here, from BX plus SI um, AL to AX. So also, yeah, there you have it. Super complex, so complex that even depending on whether you're running in 16 or 32 bit, um, this encoding has here selects different registers um, depending on which um, mode of the CPU currently running in. And um, yeah, more, uh, what is it, more Rex prefix field. So Rex, by the way, is the um, AMD invented prefix for 64-bit mode. And fun fact, um, how, how complex could they make it? Um, they, there is an instruction. So because AMD probably run out of prefix stuff or whatever the reason might be, AMD for AMD 64 with the first Athlon 64 there um, for 64 bit. X86, they have recycled, um, probably also something you've never heard before. They have recycled this ink and increment and decrement instruction um, for if you are running in 64-bit mode, then this rex prefix um, prefixes, so these are multiples, so the rex prefixes are a set of 16 opcodes that 
span one row of opcodes map and occupy entries 40 to 40F. So yeah, probably AMD wanted to have one, one set of Rex prefixes, so this is probably why they recycled the otherwise represent valid instructions increment and decrement. Um, so previously on an 8086 you had single byte instructions like one byte for increment and decrement some registers. You probably could take a look, but there you see super complex, right? It's increment and decrement unless you run in 64-bit long mode, then they become not increment and decrement but rex prefixes for this 64-bit um, modifier. So single byte opcodes in increment decrement are not available in 64-bit mode because you can't never make a instruction set complex enough. And um, oops, didn't want to click there. Darn it. Um, where, are, where are we? Oh, thankfully, we didn't jump too far. Um, yeah, if you take a look, so variable lengths, this, this already makes the whole stuff super complex, right? Um, it, it might look relatively simple when you write assembler, which probably I could have prepared here. Where would we have a fine like that? If we object dump here, our running system of object dump bin bash. Oh, let's uh, let's take a look. Let's object dump lib uh, lib lib c to see some 32-bit code, and this is how this uh, looks. Let's see, it's some GNU hash, but probably is text. Uh, I hope. And so this is how this looks in assembly. Uh, here's some real-world uh, modern modern 32-bit uh, 386 kind of code. You see here single byte instruction. This is instruction 45 hex is push. EBP um, and then two byte of move um, stack pointer um, base base pointer stack pointer and or stack pointer to base pointer um, another single byte single byte instruction push uh, destination index push the source index push this is just saving so this is just saving the um, base pointer destination index source index and B general purpose B uh, extended BEX register um, to the stack and then we see a variable length instruction with a whopping five bytes something you would again not have in RISC on RISC everything would be again usually 32 bit for example here we have already this is there you see the, the x86 instructions are not always uh, smaller but many people say hey this is nicely compressed which you can also have compressed MIPS and compressed RISC 5 but this is already longer, so this instruction wouldn't exist like this in RISC um, because it's already five byte longer than what you would have regularly have. So calling here, so this is call, so E8 is call. Uh, or, um, let's see, FD, so this is, uh, here you see a little, uh, little engine encoding um, for D, uh, D6, whatever. We don't need to decipher all of them. And another, so um, another even longer instruction, um, six bytes here, and so eight, eight one, uh, example eight one here, starting with eight one uh, C three or so, is here add uh, for adding a number as in arithmetic, adding, and here is some immediate uh, value. So one nine A V C. This is. Um, here, probably the rule of this. So this is um, little onion. Many, many people know this, of course. So maybe a dedicated video, otherwise this becomes too long. But many processors are big onion, um, just meaning how they store the data in memory, either um, starting with the lowest or highest address. And the one issue some people love and prefer big onion, like PowerPC, Spark, and MIPS. Usually, some of them are also optional little onion nowadays like PowerPC and RISC-V. But the problem is it's less readable because in memory it is stored here as this number. So it's adding this immediate number, uh, hex 109A95, and you see this is reversed here. So this is a 32, but there you see the problem with little endian. It's not as, as readable for humans or whatsoever anyway, um, because you see this number here is unnatural, unnatural Unnatural, unnatural, really swapped here with little, little engine swapping. Um, so, yeah, there's that. However, um, to be fair, 
Uh, Risk Five also defaults to Little Endian, maybe for good reason. And Intel probably has done it so for the x86 family because of this variable instruction length uh, is probably the best reason why this is Little Endian. Because if you start at this uh, at some address, so let's see this. This is the address, the start of the function, so libgccs init. Here, starting at this address, and because of the variable length instructions at format, format without little endian, you it would be difficult where to start, right? With with, with little endian, um, it always starts with the little with with the least significant bit first. So this is certainly suiting this variable length encoding. Otherwise, it would be um, big big endian x86 is would be even more. Uh, Insane, not because of break start and whatever. Um, unless maybe it would still work. Maybe you could still start like um, start parsing, and, uh, but uh, whatever. Probably even more headache. Uh, we see eventually, um, yeah, many many long instructions. Here do we have? By the way, some rep. Not sure. Yeah, here's some rep. So here we have this um, rep repeat zero at. So here we have this special. So this is repeating. Um, if this even GNU hash, not sure actually, this might be actually not even a real instruction in this hash table, but uh, whatever. You get the idea. Maybe it's used sometimes, but whatever. Let's take a look. Um, there are some comments in the audience. I try to go uh, through here first um, and I will come back to the comments um, a little bit later to have keep this a little bit more structured. If all of this would not be uh, complex enough, um, Basically, we have, we have seen all the mechanisms and complex um, complex architecture of x86 CPUs with all the prefixes, opcodes, uh, modifier bytes, and um, SIB bytes, and so on. But it doesn't stop there. They also have super freaking complex instructions. So stuff like um, BCD. So they have here BCD like ASCII just after addition. Um, for just the sum of two unpacked BCD values, like raise your hand if you ever heard about this fun stuff. But um, there is even a Twitter account of posting daily or whatsoever freaking fun of complex uh, x86 instructions. So re many really instru complex instructions are. And, and one key difference, another key difference, a second, the second major key difference is that on risk you have a very um, very separated instructions for loading for accessing memory of loading and storing and computation like adding subtracting multiply divide um, which makes this instruction so regular when we take a look here um, on this in this format oh, do we have can we search for format of here um, which is oh no, not exactly the format of here. And so what this is used, so this U format is used for loading immediates. Like if you have this magic number as seen also not here, but uh, also too many open as seen here, this immediate. So uh, like some immediate number here. So in on, on risk, you load an immediate with just this Risk five, for example, U type format of loading and immediate, and doing um, logic logic operations here. Probably this R type, if I recall correctly. Probably so with this is function stuff. So all the at sub and or x or and and so on, all use this format, and you have load, do computation, store kind of setup in Risk on complex instructions and architectures. You this is not clearly separated. So what you can do on x86 is um, load and store in um, in this instruction. So you you can do a computation, and in this add you can reference memory. So it's not like add one register to another, but always loading and storing memory and then it depends on the architecture whether you whether you have a PDP 11 or a Motorola 68k or x86 how many memory um, 
memory locations you can uh, reference, whether you can reference only one register and one memory, or you can transfer from memory to memory. Um, oftentimes you have only one memory reference per instruction, so that you can, um, as we see here in this disassembly uh, somewhere, for example, um, here many of these instructions like reference memory locations and um, something you, you can't do in risk making the whole CPU of course again more complex because instead of just doing the logic operation or arithmetic operation that the instruction is supposed to do it's Im immediately storing and loading data and certainly complicates instruction pipeline and, and, and set up much more internally of if it's for example a load the addition cannot directly start but if there's a memory reference to load it might have to load the memory first uh, from cache or from memory and wait there and this certainly makes modern x86 CPU cores highly complex and highly speculative and uh, out of order and reg register renaming which is probably all the terms we probably should take a closer look in a dedicated video because otherwise we talk here for three hours. But yeah, to achieve high performance, the vendors, Intel, AMD, VR, and uh, others, uh, Transmitter and uh, SES and, and whatnot, uh, sorry, expect in the day, had to pull lots of tricks to make this high performance uh, in terms of speculation, register renaming, uh, branch prediction, and so on. Which, however, some of this stuff also applies to RISC CPUs for highest performance. Um, again, um, so these are the two complex things, uh, variable length encoding, uh, one, one side, and um, this memory references, load and stores in the instructions, and third, very complex instructions like um, yeah, ASCII, uh, AAC, or what this was, ASCII, where do we have this? Um, anyway, this and uh, this and others, uh, let's BCD, here's some adjust to pack, yeah, and others like decimal adjust, AL after, and uh, as you see, instructions that only work on AL, for example, the good old fashioned setup of accumulator from back in the 70s, so um, not the nicest to work with. Also, as we have seen, the repeat always uses the C register for the count, so you always need to shuffle the values in the registers or in the very few registers around very specifically for the very specific um, instructions. Um, fun fact, many of these very special instructions are of course nearly never used um, in modern software anyway. Um, they probably were used in the 80s, but uh, DAA, hey, this is even maybe used, uh, also unless it's a hash. And let's see, is this a hash? Um, section or what section is it? Come on, where is the start of? Yeah, it's a hash. So it's not even a real instruction, it's well, whatever. Many of these instructions, of course, very hard to use in modern software and by a C compiler or Rust compiler. So many of these old fashioned instructions are there and, and probably never have been used in your instructions because who would write software for this very specific BCD adjust after uh, whatever and so on. This is not even all so already if this is not already complex enough Intel and AMD have extended x86 over the decades many times as we've seen from 16-bit in the original 8086 to um, 32 bit in the 386 with a protected mode with manage memory, manage man, me, memory management unit MMU um, protected mode and then later with, um, with the Pentium also later uh, the Pentium MMX for example um, the MMX the multimedia instruction set or something so here's a nice list timeline so 1978 so original real mode from the 8086. Then, as I said, as I said, few few people know this actually. The 286 protected mode, the first real extension. Uh, previously, there, there have already been previous extensions. For example, there was an NEC V20 or so that already had a couple of custom opcodes 
like extensions for some stuff. Fun fact, I uh, I once upon a time I got um, my actually theoretically my first PC. Uh, I said it before. I grew up with mostly a 386 uh, previous video there of my father's there in the 80s and 90s and um, uh, learned to work on that and fun fact um, I, I i once got an nec v20 for free i don't even maybe a friend of my father or something of, of some e-waste recycling stuff of course back in the day i probably in 1992 or three or four or something of that sort and um, um yeah certainly before so 1992 or something and um, so my, my first own thing, I could fiddle around a little bit more, um, of course, super slow. But fun fact, because an NEC V20, back in the day, I, I never heard about this. I, I got the thing, it's like, what the heck is it even? But fun fact, there was a hand-optimized BIOS for the V20, making use of some of these instructions for a little bit more perform performant, performance in the BIOS. Uh, making use of those instructions, whatever they might have been. But yeah, so t uh, 286 protected mode. I slightly wonder if uh, maybe another day I should research. I, I never researched whether this 286 protected mode is still present in 386 and later processes. I actually don't know if you know this, leave in the comments below. Maybe I should research that another day. Then 386, the um, 386 protected mode, which we used for decades, until AMD 64 long mode. Then um, 486, they only list here FPU integrated, but of course there always have been the FPU, the floating point unit, the, the optional in until uh, 486 external previous video. I have one, I have a Sarix Fast Math coprocessor, I showed it in a previous video. Um, back in the day, fun fact, back in the day we didn't have one, so back in the day in the 80s and 90s most people didn't have a floating point uh, unit um, exter external second integrated circuit um, processor um, that came standard integrated with a 486. 486 also added CPU ID I think instruction that we still use today to identify all the extended features that grew here over the years then as I mentioned um, Pentium P5 uh, Pentium with MMX there in 1996 MMX that was used for a lot of time. The problem is, um, so what are this doing, uh, this instruction doing, what I mentioned already a couple of times is this, the problem with this extension. So MMX is the first uh, multimedia extension for single instruction multiple data, meaning with one instruction, you can, for example, for multimedia stuff, 3D stuff, um, multiply a vector, like three values, like RGB, my, my, like four, four packed multiply um, my, or um, it, or add like addition and uh, saturate so that this doesn't overflow but saturate at 4 8 bit values for AGB saturating at FF all bits set without overflowing and this kind of fun instructions. The pro problem is that so not only if you write software or compile software and you don't have this like modern AVX the latest and greatest extension of AVX uh, AVX 512 for example, if you compile software um, then it doesn't run on previous CPUs. So the problem with these extensions is that software often didn't make much use out of this because games and software uh, like Windows had also to run when uh, on, on last generation processors when these extensions were not there. So use of this acceleration, accelerating single instruction multiple data was always a little bit rare and certainly games like Quake and stuff made use of this but it was extra effort to like optionally use it for example having an for example Windows DLL or Linux Unix shared object compiled twice and loading the higher optimized SMD version uh, optionally if the CPU supports this so that is uh, one huge problem and why I in many videos already said I think for this reason just in time compiled software might be much more favorable to make much more often use because otherwise with specifically compiled functions, optional functions, um, optional DLLs and shared objects it's always a little extra effort to compile and write software, set up software architecture so that it can make use of these optional features. Um, because uh, of course patents and patents and trademarks and stuff 
AMD didn't, couldn't probably easily use this MMX, so 3D now is the AMD flavor um, that many said, maybe even John Carmack of uh, id Software. Um, as far as I remember, many programmers even said 3D now might have been better. Um, we can actually uh, quickly look this up, MMX, uh, Wikipedia. Um, even for me, uh, working with this stuff daily, it is hard to keep an overview if you do not do assembly optimizations each and every day, which of course I've done plenty of times. Um, so MMX 57 new instructions, um, adding here or reusing this MMX floating, so ex extra registers for this to accelerate 2D and 3D calculations. And so uh, let's see what this, I always forget whether that was floating point or integer. I think this was integer, so yeah, MMX provides only integer operations. That was, I think, one one criticized detail. And 3D now of AMD, do we have 3D now? So um, 3D now also had floating points. We have uh, com AMD competing x86 processor renders enhanced Intel, Intel's MMX with their own 3D now instruction set. 3D now is best known for adding single precision floating point support to the single instruction multiple data set, among other integer and more general enhancements. Um, so I think many people, even fun fact, many people back in the day um, probably um, considered 3D now um, um, better and, and like also um, supports floating point. And here you see what kind of instructions are this, like packed, as I said, packed 32 bit, floating point integer. Um, comparing here, uh, greater or equal, pack comparison, accumulate, what I said, accumulate, not overflow, addition, subtraction, re reverse subtraction, mini, like minimum, yeah, minimum of some values, maximum of some values, multiplication, um, and um, averaging, rounding, and uh, prefetch, yeah, prefetching memory um, into the L1 cache to optimize the memory load and store. And um, as we just have seen, Intel stuff not as advanced as so often. Intel, of course, always say, hey, we are the latest and greatest, but as so often, um, Intel is not the only one and many other vendors often had other better extensions. For example, AMD 3D Now, AMD 64-bit long mode, and VIA, for example, fun fact, VIA was the first to include hardware encryption, uh, believe it or not, with this VR padlock of accelerated crypto um, long before Intel and AMD added this to their processors, so much to innovation and um, monopole and innovation, um, my eyes. Uh, so let's see, let's quickly go over the instructions. So the pro as I said, uh, the problem with all of the extensions always has been it required um, additional either manual assembly or special compilation. Also, compilers historically often were not the fastest to add support for this. Um, in the 90s, 2000s, it wasn't the easiest for compilers back in the day or even maybe today, not the easiest to automatically generate. Like ve what, what this means is vectorizing loops. You, you write a loop for, for these values, multiply, divide, min, max and whatsoever. And it's actually not the easiest task for a compiler to map C, C++, uh, FD, um, <laughs> JavaScript, uh, Java, uh, Rust, you name it, map this code to this very specific extensions of um, uh, this very specific integer, probably uh, actually not the list, uh, anyway, this specific, very specific um, instruction and memory. The memory layout, the problem is also your data needs to be in memory, in, 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 in formatted in, in memory in some um, matching uh, structure so that you can actually make good use out of this specific instruction. So 3D now, as so then came streaming instruction, uh, streaming single instruction multiple data, SSE uh, in some whatever Pentium, whatever that was, Pentium 2 or something, um, enhanced 3D now uh, from in K, K7 from AMD. Professional 3D now, uh, the name given AMD for 3D now plus SSE. Um, then P6 extended MMX, uh, you see extending, extending, and, and more stuff. We see this here further with SSE2, an attempt to replace original MMX instruction. Wider XMM, like wider meaning uh, this floating point MMX uh, registers being wider, 128 bit or whatever that was. 
Um, also, uh, there, when it became wider, this, by the way, the next problem, this required special support by the operating system. So you needed to update your Windows or Linux for the kernel to save the um, larger floating point in single instruction multiple data state um, so that um, applications could make use out of this and the, application, uh, the operating system would in the background task switching from one application to the other also save this now um, larger wider XMM registers. So SSE3, so basically this what, what they've usually done is adding more instructions or make, making it wider, adding new instructions uh, to operate, for example, multiple values, the same register. And then because SSE3 was not enough, they also had, I mean, this is the really classic Intel, <laughs> SSSE, triple, triple, triple SE3, supplemental streaming. So what is better than SIMD extension 3 is a supplemental streaming extension because, oops, we forgot a handful of instructions and we don't yet want to name it SSE4. Then came SSE4, um, more uh, initial set of, yeah. Usually they just added more special purpose of more pack, more uh, average uh, max min, uh, usually optimized like for MPEG decoding, encoding, um, all this or JPEG compressing, usually like stuff like specially packed um, for data. Um, as you see, uh, the innovation is not as, as high, usually just wider new instructions. So we don't really need to take a closer look at all of them. Um, for example, here SSE4A uh, for like, this is only um, for single instruction here. Yeah, so yeah, just for instruction more of whatever special, probably do we get a nice reference when we click on it? They're probably not a text page, but whatever. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, also stuff that was scratched SSE5 proposed by AMD, but was never implemented. Thank you very much for that. SSE4, uh, carry less multiplication of two registers. That's like very specific stuff here. Yeah, 20, also we have 2010 innovating with um, multiplication of two registers. And then 2011, the AVX, we now today with Sandy Bridge, advanced vector extension includes now 256-bit um, integer operations, um, F16C. Um, this is actually, so this is actually spe spe special. This is half, half floating point for 16-bit floating point. Um, I think an extension actually invented by AMD. Um, as far as I remember, um, we can actually fact check that. Nothing better than fact checking here live on um, YouTube. This is oh, it's not general, not a fighter jet. Thank you very much for um, that. Um, F16C, previous loan as CVT16. I think it was invented by, announced by AMD in 2009. So actually this list is not the most accurate, I would say. Where was it here? So this is for actually like halving this for um, not as precise uh, neural network, artificial intelligence and other similar fun stuff. Um, extended operations, XOP, FMA4, four operand, fuse, multiply and add um, L LWP for lightweight profiling, SMX, safer mode extension that needed to facilitate trusted, trusted decisions, uh, de de decisions trusted execution technology, previous video, not as probably security vulnerabilities as per usual. SMX, safe, uh, did we have this probably? AES, so encryption, there you see it, AES instruction optimizes AES. And as I mentioned previously, um, this, they were not even the first, uh, as we see when we check via pet log um, here, that was in 2003 already. Uh, instruction set found processes from VIA technologies, 2003 Centaur CPUs, hardware isolated random generation, generation AS crypto, SHA-1, SHA-256, Montgomery multi modular multiplication, um, AES, so 2003 and it took Intel and stuff maybe until, where did we have this? Um, where have we been? Somewhere here. AES. So yeah, um, nearly nearly ten years later. So that is, um, yeah, AES instruction optimizes AES operations. Um, 
bit manipulation, um, instruction set one and two, BMY bit manipulation, can never have too many bit manipulation instructions. Uh, and then because I think Intel didn't want, was it Bulldozer? Um, I think Intel didn't want to implement AMD's FMA4 with four apparent views, like four apparent meaning you have um, like um, destination equals um, source one multiplied by two at three um, for operands and somehow Intel didn't want to uh, implement it or something and Intel has implemented three operand views multiply at so, so not having a, a dedicated destination but only three operands for multiply and add in one instruction and fun fact AMD has gone now in the latest processors also implemented FMA3. They removed support for FMA4 in the latest processors. However, some processors do not indicate support for FMA4 anymore, but uh, like in CPU ID, so if you look in CPU ID, AMD CPUs, some latest and greatest, they do not advertise it, but it still works on some, apparently I heard. Anyway, fun exotic complex x86 stuff. So transactional synchronization extension. So yeah, how fancy can you go? TSX, you can even have transactional synchronization extension. It's yeah, transactional memory support. I say, and, and yeah, classic Intel later, it was broken as far as I remember. The, the early silicon where Intel implemented it, yeah, 2020 or 2015 or whenever that was, um, stuff so complex that even Intel can't implement it bug free. Um, TSX initially, as far as my memory serves me, initially broken. Um, in those Hathwell CPUs, a later microcode update even removed it completely. So you, you are a researcher, research institute, a multi um, supercomputer operator there at NSA and, and NASA and, and wherever, and buy a nice precious Intel Hathwell, whatever, and want to use TSX transaction, transactional um, extension. And then, yeah, you get a microcode update and you're uh, extension is gone away because now yeah, it was too buggy um, apparently Intel deemed it unfixable um, and I think a, a recent paper was at latest security there uh, news of probably on need to remember that uh, let me check this side probably um, their previous videos um, I think even the later in, in later implementations in, in later CPUs even had security vulnerabilities if I remember correctly from our own IT security news and vulnerability uh, newscasts. You're probably not surprised if many of the extensions you never heard about. Uh, many people of course heard about MMX, SSE or AVX but probably ADX multi precision at carry instruction extension. <laughs> Raise your hand if you ever heard about this fun stuff. Um, and then, yeah, 2014, a whopping um, probably 11 years after VIA, apparently. Um, 11 years after VIA, Intel added a random instruction, um, read random and random seed. Prefetch, because you can never have previously part of um, 3D now. So, yeah, 2014, like a decade later or so, Intel implements prefetch in Broadwell as previously seen in 3D now. And then of course 2015 AVX 512, 512 bit register. So what this is doing is this single instruction multiple data. Um, let's maybe take a look here in the, do we have here AVX 512? Um, here of um, this VEX prefix of, yeah, Intel instruction of 2015 K at V or K at W um, for word byte, quad word and double word of at 16 bit masks in K2 and K3 and replace result in K1. Um, and yeah, you probably from the summary now completely know what it's doing. So they usually have, uh, do they have here this um, destination, this bit source and yeah, so source this. 16-bit add source this, um, yeah, there you have it. Um, adds two vector masks as I just read and yeah. And AVX, as the name says, 512 means just 
making this vector size of single instruction multiple data of this floating point registers 512 bit because more bit are of course always better. This stuff so complex that even in the latest implementation of AMD they have not the full performance because I think they probably need like internally implemented as two 256 bit op operations and if you would now call out like hey AMD is running this maybe at half speed if I recall correctly you see this complex this stuff so complex even hard to keep in summary in memory but um, before you now shout out yeah you see uh, AMD running this half speed then yeah this Intel stuff this stuff so complex so many billions of or at least hundreds of millions logic gates that if programs you probably have seen it from all the big youtubers benchmarking the stuff in Cinebench and whatnot or some fun games when you run AVX 512 instructions this stuff is so complex that an energy hungry and, and maybe even like um, signal path uh, propagation latency uh, sensitive whatsoever implementation details that if you run this your Intel CPU will not turbo boost as high because uh, probably um, timing constraints and energy consumption of 512 bit freaking single instruction multiple data so yeah even the Intel stuff um, you probably have seen this BIOS settings of uh, AVX 512 penalty or whatever the BIOS option is called and um, big YouTubers benchmarking this stuff and not turbo boosting as high. So yeah, these are the uh, amazing <laughs> K and W stuff that crazy single instruction multiple data. You see 2000 pages of, yeah, good luck implementing this in hardware. Um, even remotely error-free and speculating and register renaming and um, did I say error-free and um, vulnerability free and, and secure and stuff and yeah good luck reading all of this stuff and implementing this in software and hardware. Um, that's probably it from most of the summary um, but yeah I personally certainly wouldn't even want um, to implement the basic operations in hardware uh, let alone a disassembler or um, assembler disassembler or uh, whatsoever uh, error free and uh, and so on but hardware certainly um, even this regular instructions here already complex enough let alone the single instruction multiple data extensions mmx 3d now sse variants and avx and um, all the other extensions here of uh, software guarded extensions and memory protection protection extensions which probably as far as I remember researchers usually has, have found quite some um, security vulnerabilities in there and how this works usually is that uh, when we go in here uh, this char do we quickly find of course we don't find that um, char extensions do we secure hashing algorithm do we quickly find this here or um, no how this usually works is that this instructions um, you place your security or hashing data there in memory to some kind of pointer and then this special instructions do like part of the hashing like char hashing uh, uh, AES uh, uh, security step steps there and um, yeah, implementing this very specific um, pieces of the algorithm either in full or as in step in hardware to accelerate this what otherwise is relatively complex to do in software. I think this is um, hopefully a good summary um, if you ever wondered how complex X Intel x86 is just the basic summary <laughs> a very rushed one I admit is already over one hour in talking um, so in later videos maybe in some months or years we could probably take a closer look in, in parts of this extensions how this works in details uh, certainly that is uh, way um, way more detailed than one live stream and people want to watch in one time um, we will I will continue um, of course I said it before I 
um, as, as complex as it is, it's not the biggest fun to implement this here as a just-in-time compiler I want to write in certain operating system. But the good thing is in an operating system you don't need to use all of this. You certainly need to use the basic instructions and memory management unit and then long mode and stuff. I didn't even touch many stuff like virtual 8086 mode for better virtualizing DOS applications back in the day. Um, but one thing I want to mention that um, I because I showed in previous videos I implement a just-in-time compiler most stupid simple to see what kind of performance and simplicity one could get if one wanted to and uh, what I, I was shocked to find that if for something as simple as a shift and we take a look at risk 5 shift uh, left or something and um, as you have seen these instru instructions are very um, regular and when we take a look here in some shift instruction you can use every register um, here so it's down of course as usual don't find it instantly um, because shift is mentioned um, here's some sr here's some shift probably integer register operands of shift stuff so there you see how regular risk is like in this case risk 5 uh, here's a function for uh, shift left and right source uh, source 1 source 2 destination um, so it's shifting here like shift right arithmetic or something uh, the source 1 source 2 destination and I was shocked to find even I uh, with 20 uh, over 20 years of experience and certainly knowing x86 assembly and machine code but not each and every bit but I was shocked to find in, in risk you can shift like shift like this bits like left left and right shifting this bits in these registers by a variable amount like um, probably source 2 or something like uh, performs log logical uh, shift value in the value of the register S1 by the shift amount with the register S2 so you can if you have a very very variable shift like shift by register 12 like shift 1 2 3 4 5 bits variable um, you can like on risk 5 there you see the difference risk 5 super regular and yet quite easily usable and on x86 you will be uh, do I find this shift left or something here and um, probably raise your hand leave me in the comments below if you knew um, that on x86 this shift by a variable amount you can only use the CL register raise your hand even I didn't know this um, I only discovered this recently working on my just-in-time compiler stuff and yeah super annoying to write a compiler for this because that means if you have a variable shift amount you you cannot like on all the other risk architectures and there you also see it's super complex and yet so limited and I personally rather work with a nicely sorted um, MIPS, Spark, RISC-5, um, you name it in my opinion it's it's hilarious that one of the most complex instruction sets has such an um, market share and so many decades of legacy producing such a complex and yet complex and yet limited and imagine what kind of speculation um, uh, scalar execution register renaming and all the uh, excessive pipelining tricks and internal risk like decoding and um, issuing internal risk uh, micro operations is going on in a modern x86 uh, CPU to achieve this level of performance and yet you can't shift left and right here multiply this here by CL times so yeah what you probably can do on any other risk architecture shift and this is of course uh, just an example you will find this also on many other um, instructions that you can on x86 you can only do it with this register in, in only with this special form and stuff and yeah it's it's hilarious for a compiler that probably means um, to not lose your sanity writing if you write your own compiler like GCC LLVM Clang uh, TCC PCC uh, or Intel uh, Microsoft compiler stuff uh, probably it's the easiest in a compiler to just not use the C register as a general purpose register because it's so often used as a repeat or a count so probably that means just don't use C for um, for general purpose 
purposes um, and just like reserve it for use by the compiler and um, move move this uh, yeah special kind of counting situations there copy it like move with copy it over with move instruction or so over to the C register for this kind of uh, repeat and variable shift count and whatsoever so yeah anyway funny little insights and anecdotes let's see what comments we have there to answer this i hope you learn this and um, find this useful and see how uh, all the x86 stuff that you probably have plenty at home or in your tesla or spacex rocket there um, is working it's also personally i would use uh, x86 in neither a car or a rocket but uh, anyway i'm not elon musk but uh, yeah i'm certainly hoping i i've you've seen this here on this channel i have plenty of risk stuff um, back in the day power pc spark um, sun microsystem and sgi uh, like octane and i find i always found and still find to this day working risk risk much more sane easier uh, easier to understand uh, much more error uh, error less less error prone um, and certainly much saner to work with and i'm certainly um, appreciating a hopefully um, more nicely reduced and keeping it stupid minimally sorted risk five future to come because oh my god 2000 pages and that is only the main part there could even be um, additional documents for the other extension not even sure if all the also it has here some vex 128 and 255 and 512 um, encodings here not even sure if this architecture software developers manual includes here all the bits and pieces that you would ever need for that so let's after this need some coffee and let's take a look at the comments um people something hacking dr go um glaucus wants a video on the 8085 i think um the 8085 my my father had. i honestly i tried so fun fact the 8085 let's answer the comments in the audience also um, i'm considering maybe um, to better sort this youtube channel maybe in the future leave in the comments below if i should after this video end here now to keep this main video short and attract people to tune in because otherwise this video now with this additional um, question and answer usually become easily 30 if not more minutes minutes longer um, leave in the comments below if we should always stop the live stream the problem is always killing momentum and continuing the question and answer on the more live channel there um, in the recommended channel list maybe this might make the videos more attractive leave in the comments below what you think so maybe today is the last time we do the q a direct directly in this main live stream um fun fact the 8085 has um it's it's an aluminum case box with some um numpad stuff and so programming this um, doesn't even have it only has a seven segment display and tape um tape um connection for storing uh, loading and storing programs similar to a c commodore c64 on on tape magnetic tape uh, super annoying to program um, because you for the most part need to t mostly type you, you would need to write assembler on paper um, or maybe on a program either translate this machine stuff on paper to this numbers here uh, encoding of 8085 uh, here that we probably see here somewhere or you have a program but anyway even if you have a if you if you write your program of 8085 assembler you would still need to type this into this uh, home micro typing it with a um like num numeric hex pad there in there so yeah programming not for the faint heart is probably more of a learning diy learning experience there and probably make a video um sometime in the future uh, SJ Octane, Acer O2 desktop background would be a great book uh, recommending understanding x86 instruction set. There are so many, it's hard to pick. I think I might not have any books, so or maybe maybe the friend of the friend of mine there back in the days, we, we might have learned. Probably we have learned x86 from the Turbo Assembler manual and maybe like PC in turn or 
um, PC intern back in the day, PC intern four or five or something, and Turbo Assembler. So I don't really have a book re recommendation. Um, so yeah, sorry, but good question, but don't really have one at hand. Um, uh, what I know they do is usually use this kind of instruction listings from Internet AMD. <coughs> Um, some people hacking in the comments have experience with embedded um, old school ask uh, embedded systems uh, yes of course the question is what exactly you mean big fan of modern day microcontrollers especially parallax chips those things are awesome yeah nowadays of course a lot of AT Atmel AT Mega and uh, certainly ARM which also we have done already this kind of ISA summary for RISC-V MIPS Spark and now X86. We will also do another month to ARM and others. What else do we have? Anyway, ARM or maybe more, whatever we see fit. So probably don't forget to like and subscribe for many more of this in-depth stuff to come in the future. Um, old school writes, X86 has more cycles to load in upcodes and runs. Honestly, X86 is overrated. Uh, yeah, in my opinion, it, it's it's way too complex. It's way out of hand. It's a um, it's a shame that like all the big vendors like with like Sun, SGI certainly um, yeah were probably in retrospect killed by Intel, uh, Vin, Vintel, um, marketing and money. Uh, bribing marketing bribing schemes of even the shady stuff there with SGI and HP managers of previous Microsoft and fame and stuff and um, even Hewlett Packard PA risk previous video um, so much stuff killed also with the uh, Intel Antenium the, the super in ah, yeah we could make a future video of Intel Antenium right of also why this stuff didn't take off and anyway uh, Carlos Wright, what do you think about doing an 8086 emulator? Um, if you ask if I will do one, then probably not, because there are already Boss QEMU PC emulator and certainly others. Um, so not doing that. And even even fun fact in the Linux kernel for uh, KVM, because early, at least early Intel processors, fun fact, didn't in implement real mode in virtualization. So um, as far as I know, at least for remote, but maybe also others. This is also why on early early Intel Silicon, like Sync Core to do, if you run QEMU, the BIOS booting and bootloader is super slow. Like you could, if you have Grub in Core to do, and you run QEMU, you can actually watch, even with KVM, watch Grub paint very slowly the splash screen and stuff like this because it's running in real mode. And this is not accelerated in at least early Intel uh, virtualization extension and probably also the reason int, uh, x86 has some not very um, some properties of x86 make it not as virtualization friendly which is only why in contrast to many other architectures uh, we needed this hardware um, virtualization extension in the first place um, for high performance and stuff but that is probably a topic for another video um, so yeah, I not for fun, not, not but I for me it's already it's certainly already a lot of uh, work to make a keep it stupid simple just in time compiler just for fun. It's already it's more useful for me anyway. Uh, Danny, welcome from work. Um, A2, don't forget about A20M. Uh, doesn't really what uh, A20? Do you mean A20? Probably A20 gate, right? I probably mentioned that. Um, firmware level emulator. Uh, I wanted to say. Um, so KVM has an in-kernel instru x86 instruction set emulator for this, I think, and um, at least X server have x86 real mode instruction emulation for posting video cards. So if you have a video card in your Intel, x86, Intel AMD x86 or even PowerPC and so on to post initialize like power on safe test VGA cards from the VGA expansion ROM, um, even their Xox server um, emulating x86 instructions um, in case of to do that. Uh, more questions, x86, v, um, x86 either is complex, it's easy instruction set at least for myself, well I also implemented my own instruction set complete uh, what my own instruction set complete 
AVX assembler, which I'm using myself. That is amazing. However, I don't find it well. I find this much more easy to work with any of this risk super, as I said, nicely sorted load store, um, nicely, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, vertical or uh, vertical instructions or something. Um, many, as I outlined in this video, a lot of exceptions, uh, special fields and whatnot, not the, but yeah, I'm happy that you're happy and implemented this, uh, certainly cool achievement. Um, only the instruction binary encoding, x86, is some cases wired, but still pr practical indeed. Um, CPU show uh, maxing with the first, um, maxing within the first two bytes level, every instruction by size with a more significant bit, one bit nibble, the way they could run complicated operations in fraction of cycles uh, by there. Maybe you can even set the endiness by a pin. Um, on some in, in some um, processors, you can set the endiness on the fly. You could even run some applications, um, maybe even some PowerPC, not, not sure with Spark, but PowerPC MIPS. Um, and you, some, some of them are even, even ARM. Um, from all of those exist little, little and big endian, and some of them you could even um, change endianness on um, task switch as in how to the, how the kernel manage it. Maybe, maybe they're once even not sure. Uh, the modern power PC is even uh, modern IBM stuff, little Indian. I don't even quite understand why, but um, maybe they have been correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe they're even not sure with the modern ones if the modern ones can still do big and little Indian optionally, like task switching, and then you, uh, depending on a bit in the um, CPU state um, allowing little and big engine, even maybe potentially if the operating system has support for that with multiple in in one multiple different applica engine applications in one operating system. Welcome, Devi um, model citizen. Think forty six could have half register nibbles each being four bits AX was available as AH high and sure what obsolete now nowadays this was not four bit this was um, eight bit so AL and so they were eight bit so this was not this was bytes in within the 32 bit word what else do we have you know this jumped uh, for DX uh, had the floating point unit as X didn't um, yeah I still have Processor somewhere. Um, Andreas Bowman thought AX was a 16 bit full register since 1886, AX being 8 bit parts. Yes, they were 8 bit. Um, and yeah, long mode as the Rex prefix makes this R AX 64 bit versions. Uh, that is correct. Hopefully, that was clear early, earlier. Uh, more comments actually, I think, right about mistakes I will lose uh, mind with uh, making. From about the show two, taking random some video converting quickly. Last full assembler project did was war dialer does something. Uh, proprietary security and credits are not to be trusted. Yeah, this is a fun part. Um, hardware with, with, with what many people, security people like myself and others, are certainly others, myself included, always said. Um, Hardware security is like, yeah, who can guarantee us that this is really secure? And as we've seen, even if Intel pretends it's secure, then even they had vast security vulnerabilities. Um, press for my EX1, one, two, sub, cotton masks confuse me big times. Um, yeah, that is, um, if this is like this, we can check this. But yeah, this, this stuff is really historically uh, ridiculous. Um, ah, darn, how can this jump like this? Um, let's see here, is it here? So this is A, what is it, A1, so this is A, C, yeah, so a register here of AX is zero, like Andreas Bowman said, so yeah, super confusing. I also wonder why they didn't make this AX, BX, CX, DX here, but yeah, didn't make this stuff up, it's hilarious, what is it? Uh, so this, uh, this, this here, by the way, so this means, this 101 means there is an SIB byte that follows um, 
as I before lost the MIB. So there you see this is how this is encoded. Um, if when to use this SIB um, additional um, uh, what was it uh, index something um, ah, what was the correct name getting getting Wait, where do we have this? Uh, scale, ah, scale, yeah, obviously. Scale index space, so whether to the scale index space is used is encoded here as we have seen with, with this special thing. Uh, where was it even? Ah, here. So here, this this here means 101 uh, here or here, but there you also see is it, yeah, so 100. Zero, zero. Um, 100 zero zero here always means um, SIB follows and this also means displace, displacement 32 um, as in follows there as in added to the index uh, this is an immediate 32-bit immediate displacement force instruction so yeah this is how this, the processor certainly needs to use some bits whether this SIB um, and immediate values follows so this is how with this bit pattern there how it is encoded. Um, what are you saying if Wi-Fi on T2? Do you mean on Wi-Fi on T2? But that's amazing. Welcome. Um, 86 PC, compatible assembly language design interface, something, uh, favorite reference, a bit old now. Yeah, but certainly the old reference is certainly the easier to read because not all the complex um, long mode and uh, single instruction multi-data stuff to be considered. Um, probably that means we are through the comments here. Again, leave me the comments. I'm looking forward to uh, hear from you what you think about this um, monstrous often instructions of architecture in 2200 nearly pages of basic summary. I hope you appreciated this and learned something. Um, and if I forgot something or something to correct or suggestions how to handle live streams or present this article, um, if so, pr probably maybe pre-made open office presenter power, aka PowerPoint like slides of a YouTube video might be more uh, successful, but certainly it takes even more time for me to present um, to prepare presentation and this. So live stream format for me, optimizing my time, uh, similar to a university lecture here. Um, anyway, that's as much time as I have for you today. And I hope to see you soon for all the videos and live streams and ARM um, and, and other fun stuff, uh, Intanium and uh, who knows what to come in the future videos here on this and the More Life channel.